the 2012 summit of the International Transport Forum. Seamless transport, making connections. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to our opening session of the International Transport Forum here in Leipzig, our fifth year. This year, our theme, as you see, seamless transport, making connections. Uh, my name is uh, Pat Cox. It's my privilege to moderate this introductory session uh, this afternoon. And it's my great pleasure to welcome here all of our ministers and their delegations, their excellencies, the ambassadors from many states, our special guests and distinguished guests, and you, ladies and gentlemen, to this uh, event uh, here today. Our, our theme of seamlessness and connection will explore integration, optimization, moving systems from patchworks to networks, and supply lines from chains to supply streams. So it's about flow, seamlessness, connection, and optimization. For those of you in language terms who want to follow, let me just give you a quick map on the uh, languages and channels. Japanese, channel two. German, channel three. Russian, channel four. French, channel five. English, channel six. Our running order this afternoon is to hear our introductory speeches. I shall come presently to invite the representative of the Japanese presidency of the International Transport Forum to make the opening address, followed by a welcoming address from our host, uh, the German uh, Federal Minister, Dr. Ramsar, and followed by a keynote address from a special guest. When we've heard the opening addresses, we will then be joined by a panel of uh, ministers and uh, experts, and we look forward to their contribution. But it is now my great pleasure, on your behalf, to invite Mr. Osamu Yoshida, who is the Senior Vice Minister of Land, Transport and Infrastructure in Japan, to come forward, please, and to address us in the opening address of this International Transport Forum on behalf of the Japanese Presidency. Mr. Yoshida. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry, uh, it's so regrettable that uh, Minister Maeda is, uh, is uh, impossible to come here. So, and also that my English is not so good. So, uh, I will make a speech in Japanese. Sorry. Ramzawa uh, Daijin. Your Excellency, Mr. Ramzawa, Federal Minister of Transport, Building and Urban Development, Your Excellency, Mr. Guya, and uh, Mr. Sekimizu, Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me extend my heartfelt welcome to all of you to the opening plenary of the 2012 Annual Summit of ITF. On behalf of the Presidency for 2012, it is an honor for me to greet you. Originally, Minister Maeda uh, was uh, planned uh, to uh, deliver a speech. Uh, in his uh, speech, uh, I will uh, give you uh, my opening address. First of all, there is still a problem with the uh, channel of the translation. As a host country, Minister Ramzawa. I paid a visit to Kamakura and Tokyo this January and had a discussion with Minister Maeda. And uh, both ministers agreed to make devoted efforts for a successful outcome of the ITF ministerial meeting. I'm delighted to share the joy with him today of seeing uh, the auspicious opening of the ministerial meeting. 
the in order to create an international forum for uh, transport for the purpose of active opinion exchange at high levels, in other words, to create a forum uh, of transport Davos. Uh, it was in 2008. Until today, the membership of ITF has increased, enabling us to take up a variety of themes for discussions like environment, globalization, innovation, and society. I would like to take this opportunity to confirm with, with you all the laudable achievements of the past five, five years. Yet five years are, on the other hand, too short for us to be self-complacent with the reality uh, we have to continue our efforts by further utilizing the strength of ITF. Namely, it is a global organization with 53 members. It covers all the transport modes of land, water, and air. It covers a variety of stakeholders, including government, industry, academia, and NPOs. It is also equipped with an acclaimed research sector. Utilizing such a strength to the fullest extent, I can safely say that this is a forum of Davos uh, in the field of transport. If we use uh, this strength to the fullest extent, uh, ITF would transform into a most beneficial organization for policymakers. Through active and candid discussions on many themes, we can be proactive and create a new current in advance of future transport policies. What can we do to fulfill this aspiration? In my view, it is of utmost importance to share our experience and wisdom. We cannot uh, find an answer in textbooks, but in our daily practice. When we try to take measures against certain policy issues in Japan, then what is being practiced in other countries is a useful aid for our policy decisions. For example, uh, such things are being done in a certain country or in this country or that country, then uh, this will be taken up as a reference. When we try to implement the environmental measures or sort of traffic congestion in urban areas or introduce new infrastructure improvement measures like PPP, we extensively study various cases of other countries and obtain valuable lessons from them. I also assume that you may also find an opportunity of learning from what is being done in Japan. Internet, Skype, or social net service, uh, such a telecommunication technology has so advanced that it enables us to exchange data beyond physical distance almost instantaneously. We should take full advantage of the benefit of high information availability. On top of this benefit, it is all the more important for policy makers to assemble once a year, together with their wisdom from East and West, and their experience from North and South. Face to face is very important. The process of uh, such mutual exchange triggers unexplainable chemical reactions, generating new ideas. This year's annual summit is themed with seamless transport. Transport provides people with access to work and education thereby realizing social participation of citizens and a better quality of life. Furthermore, transport allows regions to foster industries and serves as a driving force to grow economy through movement of people and transportation of raw materials and products. If transport becomes genuinely seamless, designed to ensure the movement of people and goods to their destinations without any obstacles, we would undoubtedly see unprecedented growth of regional economies and people's life. And if we uh, proceed with a seamlessness of traffic or transport, uh, it will smoothen and uh, achieve a higher efficiency of flow of goods and people. 
and it will produce a good uh, effects in the viewpoint of environment and energy. Particularly since the Great East uh, Japan earthquake, Japan faces energy-related issues. I am of opinion seamless transport will contribute to the solution of this problem. However, the state of seamless transport cannot be achieved overnight. In reality, we witness many seams. It is important to identify what hinders seamless transport and think thoroughly what to do to eliminate one seam after another. That is the only way to come closer to the realization of seamless transport. Unremitting efforts to achieve ideal transport is indeed the spirit of the ministerial summit of this year. I sincerely hope that the three-day summit starting today will create a number of chemical reactions for new ideas. And all those new ideas will be brought back to your countries. And that is the hope I have. I sincerely hope that uh, this meeting uh, will be a fruitful one for you. And with this remark, I would like to conclude uh, my opening remarks. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Minister Yoshida, thank you for those uh, opening remarks. Uh, I like your phrase that this is the Davos of transport. And now with Leipzig on the map after five years, the other thing will become the Leipzig of the world economy. It is my great pleasure now to uh, invite uh, to address us the Minister for Transport, Building and Urban Development of the Federal Republic of Germany and our host, Dr. Peter Ramsauer. You have the floor. Uh, friend, uh, dear friend, Pat Cox, Minister Yoshida, uh, colleagues, undersecretaries of uh, state, junior ministers, uh, special guests from the world over, ladies and gentlemen, it is now for the fifth time that the International Transport Forum is hosted in Germany, and uh, I am uh, very happy to be able to welcome you on behalf of my country and also on behalf of the federal government, the government of the Federal Republic of Germany. So a warm welcome to all of you. In particular, I would like to say that uh, Federal Chancellor Ms. Angela Merkel says hello, and I would like to extend her greetings. Uh, she wishes us uh, interesting, tangible, and fruitful uh, discussions and negotiations. Discussions like that can only lead to results when all relevant players, all relevant uh, decision makers, uh, politicians, representatives of business, research establishments, uh, can pool their ideas and uh, can brainstorm their ideas. I'm particularly happy that very renowned uh, speakers and presenters and representatives have come to Leipzig again. Besides them as participants, besides you as participants, it is the actual organization, uh, the actual housekeeping, so to speak, which makes a major contribution to the success of such a multi-day meeting. I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Yoshida. I would like to thank you and your staff for having agreed to be this year's uh, presidents uh, during a time which is a very difficult time for Japan. And uh, I was able uh, to uh, see that with my own eyes when I traveled to Japan in January this year. Uh, 
Together with the International Transport Forum and uh, my own uh, staff at my ministry, you have assembled a top-notch uh, set of speakers and uh, uh, representatives. And uh, I can see that, that it is all very top drawer when I look at the program. Uh, this is still about uh, an introduction and saying uh, welcome to you. So I would like to uh, thank the person who is responsible for uh, having this meeting in Leipzig. Uh, this is my predecessor. Uh, this is a thanks to my predecessor, Mr. Wolfgang Tiefensee. I would like to uh, say uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Tiefensee. Your political biography, all right, uh, it would have been a Freudian slip uh, almost, but your political biography is closely connected to this great uh, city that is Leipzig. Wolfgang Tiefensee, before he became Minister of uh, Transport, uh, he was the Lord Mayor of this great city. It is a particular pleasure for me that you, as the former mayor of uh, this town and as my predecessor, uh, that it is thanks to you uh, that uh, the ITF meeting has taken root in Leipzig. And uh, I would like to welcome you as our guest of honor. So a particular welcome to you, Mr. Uh, Tiefensee. Ladies and gentlemen, the main issue we discuss uh, this year is uh, the aim of creating seamless transport. Seamlessness, indeed, in lots of industries and fields of business is still a vision. And over the next couple of days, we will discuss how to get closer to that aim. When you look back into the history of uh, economics, a lot that was implemented later on that became a day-to-day -day business. It didn't even start with a vision, but it started with dreams and an illusion. But step by step, those illusions were implemented and we came closer to solutions. I'm very happy that here in Leipzig, uh, we will have the opportunity to present quite a number of initiatives which in the short term even can lead to results, to tangible results. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, despite all uh, seamlessness, of course, a safety and security in international passenger and goods traffic is key. To put it in more concrete terms, we should foster initiatives for more safety on cruise liners, on cruise ships, so that we don't have an accident again, a disaster again, uh, which we had uh, with the Costa Concordia disaster when the Costa Concordia keeled over uh, on the Italian coast. In our ministerial rounds, uh, we will talk about uh, piracy as well as crisis management in aviation. And uh, we will discuss uh, the necessity for clear-cut rules and procedures at an international level, and we need to confirm that. That is very important as uh, the danger for passenger and goods uh, traffic do not stop at borders, but those dangers are an international and global phenomenon and need international and global procedures to counteract those dangers. This is not just true for uh, disasters or exceptional situations uh, which we had two years ago with the volcanic ash cloud. Also, the impact of traffic at large, of transport at large, needs new solutions and new approaches. Uh, 
the growth uh, which we welcome, the growth of passenger and goods uh, traffic, of course, is a big challenge for Germany as well as your countries. Uh, great challenges indeed. And uh, we cannot meet those challenges by just building and perfecting our infrastructure. That is not sufficient. What is needed is we have to tap all opportunities, make good use of all opportunities uh, to enhance the efficiency of our transport and traffic uh, paths and uh, to improve the performance of our existing uh, transport infrastructure, that is. In order to achieve that, of course, we need uh, innovation, higher uh, efficiency. We need to be innovative. And um, this is about traffic and transport management, about logistics systems, as well as uh, telematics. In order to achieve seamlessness, what we need is a comprehensive uh, intermodality of our industry. Only with a smart connectivity of a smart connections between uh, water, air, rail and road, only with that kind of smart uh, connectivity, we can foster seamlessness of mobility, uh, which is also sustain sustainable at the same uh, time. In uh, Germany, we bank on combined traffic, where uh, goods, where a freight uh, stay in the same uh, unit, loading unit, for instance, in a container, but uh, then is being shipped around on different modes of transport from their source to their destination. With the fostering of hubs, of freight hubs, the federal government of Germany makes a great uh, contribution to turning this combined traffic system into a success. Freight. Uh, transport, which is freight, which is shipped in this way uh, over the last 10 years. The uh, volume has uh, just about doubled, has, has doubled. Besides creating this kind of connectivity, besides uh, this kind of intermodality, uh, the vision of seamlessness also entails uh, international links and connections. Uh, in order to bring together people and from all over the world and to ship goods around all, all over the world. A good example is the new container train link, uh, which uh, we have created uh, to ship car parts uh, between Leipzig, namely, and uh, Xinjiang in the northeast of China. Uh, this is uh, about uh, car parts uh, coming from a renowned German car brand, a renowned German car maker, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, those 11,000 kilometers, uh, which is quite a long way, uh, for those 11,000 kilometers, the uh, trains at the moment uh, need uh, 23 days, and uh, that is only half as long compared to a situation uh, when those containers were uh, shipped by boat. And uh, with that great link, uh, which uh, was still a vision 10 years ago, we make sure, we guarantee an almost just-in-time delivery. And uh, we know that in the foreseeable future, those 23-day uh, periods uh, can be shortened even more. Seamless connectivity, seamless uh, tra traffic links do not just exist between the city of Leipzig and China, but to give you another example, between Leipzig and Munich, namely as far as e-mobility is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, call it uh, a, a showcase project, 
those uh, 400 kilometers between uh, Leipzig and Munich uh, along the uh, motorway. Uh, we want to create the loading infrastructure in order to make it uh, possible for e-vehicles to go back and forth uh, between Leipzig and Munich. This is what this e-mobility showcase is all about. As you can see, seamlessness in transport has lots of different faces and is about lots of different approaches. What the actual word means a seam at the end of the day is uh, the uh, transfer point or the connection point between two or more individual parts. As the transport system consists of uh, different individual parts, the uh, development of a holistic transport strategy entails very special challenges which one individual country wouldn't be able to master. And uh, sometimes uh, it's not even possible for an individual continent to come up to those challenges and find solutions. I would be very happy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, guests, I would be very happy when the ITF uh, 2012 makes a contribution uh, so uh, that uh, we create the necessary links and connectivity uh, which are needed in order uh, to achieve what is our topic, namely seamlessness. So I wish us all a very uh, good meeting and a politically fruitful stay in Leipzig and uh, welcome again. Thank you, uh, Minister Ramsar. It's my pleasure now to invite two addresses for a keynote address, uh, Mr. Giuseppe Schiarone. He is the Chief Executive Officer of the Nuovo Transporto Viaggiatori from Italy, which is a new private sector uh, addition to the high capacity and long distance rail network in Italy. Uh, new in Europe, I know our friends from Japan know already practiced in Japan. So between the European story and later, if not today, in the course of these days, the Japanese perspective, it will be interesting to share and, as Minister Yoshida remarked, to learn from each other from these practices. But it's my pleasure now to invite Mr. Shironi, please, to address you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, afternoon, good afternoon. First of all, I bring you the personal apologies of Mr. Luca di Montezemolo, who couldn't be here today because uh, he had to attend uh, the funeral ceremony of an historical worker of the rising team uh, of Ferrari. So uh, he apologies to all of you and he asked me uh, to read his speech. What I am going to do? A development that is compatible with the environmental recovery of our planet and with the reduction of energy consumption must be one of the main objectives of economic policy of this century. The transport system, which is one of the major pollutant and energy consuming industries, must play a key role in this context. A new goal has recently been added to this, uh, following the economic recession in Europe and other parts of the world, which has caused a minor minor willingness to pay on behalf of consumers. The reorganization of transport companies aimed at the reduction of production costs and therefore the prices of the services for the customers. There are uh, at least three ways in which the transport system can contribute to the objectives set. The first 
is the production of environmentally friendly means of transportation. The second issue is the development of more efficient modes of transportation in terms of energy consumption. And third is that of the maximum integration between different modes of transportation. It is this letter which is the theme on which the forum is focused this year, and it is this theme that I will dwell on with uh, some general considerations that want to be a possible introduction to a, a deep de debate. A transportation system is effectively integrated when the individual modes are employed in their areas of maximum efficiency and managed in a strictly coordinated manner. In this type of context, connections have a fundamental role through which is it is possible to connect all the different modes of transport so as ensure that users, whether passengers or goods, have the opportunity to move from origin to destination of their trip without interruption. A modern integrated transport system requires at least four levels of connections. First level, the infrastructural level, which consists of the construction of major nodes, airport and railway stations for passengers, ports and terminal for intermodal freight designed to minimize transfer time between modes. The management connection, the second level, which consists of coordinating planning of the timetables of different management companies defined so as to minimize waiting times. The third level, the tariff connection which consists in offering passenger the possibility to move from one trip using more than one transportation mode, even if operated by different carriers with a single ticket. The fourth level, the information technology connections, which is the real point of coming years and which therefore I consider appropriate to discuss a little longer. The information technology connection can be based on the intensive use of wireless technologies, which are part of a well-established development. The number of people that use a mobile phone is already well above the number of internet users from a fixed computer point with more than 5 billion mobile phones compared to 2 billion users of the internet. The amount of digital data transmitted wirelessly is increasing with an average annual rate of 90%, and this phenomenon will be further enhanced with the beginning of the fourth generation wireless networks, LTE. Wireless technologies represent a new opportunity to adjust and optimize a complex and integrated system of transportation as it can combine the needs of travelers equipped with smartphones and transportation offers that are insured by different companies in the interchanges nodes. With the use of wireless technologies, the transport system becomes an interconnected set of people, things, vehicles of transport, which develops an enormous mass of information available in real time. Such information will allow for passengers to calculate in real time the best solution for transport and be able to readily detect, for example, for example, the risks of congestion. For the operators to plan and manage resources to define interoperability agreements with other operators, provide ancillary services to travelers, 
perform analysis of user profiles in order to understand and better meet their needs. The implementation of an integrated transport system, which I tried to outline very briefly, cannot be separated by a reorganization of the system from the institutional and administrative structure point of view, which must cover the individual countries and Europe as a whole. In the first place, a really integrated transportation system requires that the planning of investments be carried out at a level that analyzes the system as a whole and not at the level of the analysis of individual modes. This means that the programming skills and the financial means to help fund investments should be merged into a ministry that is responsible for the entire system and not lost as sometimes happens in different ministries each responsible for singular components of the system. I also believe that it is essential that we proceed with greater rapidity and more uniformly towards the liberalization of services, which has been in past years and still is as the basis of the European Union's transport policy. Some sectors have gone ahead, air transportation, maritime transportation, and the results are clear for everyone. Those countries that have liberalized more services have recorded growth rates of demand well above those of countries that have proceeded more slowly. Other sectors have remained behind in particular, although with some exceptions, rail transportation. Something has been done for cargo, but much less, almost nothing for passengers. Regarding this, please let me recall with a bit of pride that our country is at the forefront because it has liberalized, anticipating European decisions the long-distance railway market for passengers, the domestic market included, and also because an Italian company, Nuovo Trasporto Viaggiatori, of which I am one of the founding partners, this is uh, uh, Luca Di Montezemolo speaking, but I am also a, <laughs> a founding partner has only uh, a few days ago broken a monopoly that had lasted over 100 years in the transportation of people on middle and long distances and has finally offered to the market a chance to choose who to travel with. It is now necessary that the very different situation of opening toward the market that is going ahead in the, in the individual countries be aligned as soon as possible with the help of the European Union in order to move towards a truly European system of transport in every sense. Finally, an integrated and truly liberal, liberalized transport system cannot do without a proper regulation of the sector, which should be entrusted to a third party respect to the actors of the field, which are represented by the ministries, the infrastructure managers, and transport companies. An authority which must be given the task of defining the cost of infrastructure use, the control of market access, the verification of the compliance to the rights of consumers. National regulators must operate according to rules which must be as much as possible unified at 
European level. A transport system that is organized in this way requires, as I have already stressed, a strong commitment of the European Union and of individual countries so as to design it and needs substantial investments to implement it. And regarding this point, I must conclude referring to the difficult period that Europe is experiencing on an economic point of view and the need to rebuild growth that all our countries need. The investments that the transport sector needs would have a double positive effect, a significant contribution to economic growth and the creation of a modern transportation system, essential for the efficiency of our industries and for the quality of life of our citizens. Thanks for your attention. Now, we're going to uh, prepare the, the stage here for our uh, panel, but Mr. Schiroli, thank you very much for, uh, for those remarks, which were your chairman's remarks, but I think also from what you delivered, which are feeling your remarks too. You mentioned that you're the CEO of this, uh, this uh, new offer in Italy. You mentioned that it breaks a 100-year-long uh, monopoly. And I understand that the first train that you actually ran after developing your plan was last Saturday. So, too soon to call about seamlessness, but what is the first experience and what kind of market reaction? The first experience, uh, it seems uh, to be good, we, but we are satisfied if our customers will be satisfied. And the first reaction of the uh, customers uh, was good. We, in four days, the four days of this uh, long weekend, uh, of the 1st of May, we operated 16 trains with a punctuality of 100%, not bad, and we transported uh, 6,000 uh, people. Uh, the figures, the first figures are not bad, are good, I must say, but uh, we know that the machine is very complex. The competitor is, uh, has uh, a huge experience. We have to work a lot for uh, the fine-tuning of our uh, experience. But we are sure that uh, with our project, uh, we give to our country a, a double uh, contribution. A growth, significant growth, of the demand for transportation, uh, for railway transportation, and a contribution to the modernization of the transportation system of our country. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to join me over here, please, on the uh, panel, and I will invite the other panelists, please, to take their place. You're here on my right. Could I invite, please, to join us now on the platform uh, Minister Yoshida, Minister Ramsar, Minister Elmsler Sverd, Minister Kobalia, uh, Mr. Sierroni is here, and Mr. Miyahara, please, if you could come forward to the platform. <laughs> Minister Ramsar, Minister Kobalia, Mr. Yoshida, Minister, you are here. Catalina, you are here, and Mr. Miyahara. So, uh, thank you, uh, all those who've uh, spoken uh, by way of uh, introduction and scene setting uh, for these uh, several days. Uh, I think what I might do in the panelists is turn to some of the people who've yet to speak and to hear some views from them before opening up to the full uh, panel. Let me turn to the Minister for Transport from Georgia, uh, Vera Kobalia, if I could, please. And, um, ask you, you've heard the introduction, you're here for a, a theme focused on seamlessness. What do you take as the, the key challenges and what does it mean in a practical sense 
to the organization of, of policy in Georgia? Sure. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this panel today. Um, I really enjoyed the introductory speeches. And uh, in terms of Georgia and what seamless transport mean to us, uh, let me tell you in two seconds what Georgia represents today because it is a country in the Caucasus region. And you might uh, think and know of Georgia as part of Soviet Union 20 years ago. Today, Georgia is a very different country, and transport is a very big part of that. Uh, over the last eight years, we've managed to completely reform the country. Uh, we've managed to turn uh, and differentiate the sectors that are uh, making part of our economy, and transport and logistics is a big part of that. And most importantly, the first step for us, because we're a country that doesn't have natural resources such as oil and gas, we've managed to turn the country into one of the least corrupt countries in our region based on World Bank and based on Transparency International, which gave us uh, an opportunity to create a hub economy for our region. So when you look at Georgia, five million citizens, uh, you realize that it's a small market, but then you look at the rest of the region and you see 100 million people that we can service and we can create a hub for. So uh, being and uh, uh, thriving to be a hub economy, transport and logistics is the key to that. And having seamless transport is the key to that. Um, there's been a lot of talk about transport modes, but what I believe is an important part of transport is the customs uh, on the borders as well. So one of our main prerogatives in the beginning was to completely reform the customs procedures. And one of the things we've done is uh, we uh, rehired 100% new customs officers and we've turned all the procedures into electronic procedures where today uh, it takes on average 20 minutes to pass through customs in Georgia of, with any type of goods. Um, another uh, thing that we did and we realized that um, there's two important components uh, in terms of <coughs> developing seamless transport. One is uh, creating basic infrastructure such as roads, highways, and making sure that the railroad system is strong and efficient. Uh, what we've done is we've upgra upgraded the railway uh, tracks in the country. Uh, you know that during Soviet Union, the tracks differed the, from the ones that are in Europe. So we are switching to European standard now, and we are also building a new line which will connect uh, Azerbaijan George, via Georgia to Turkey, which will create a new direction for uh, Asian goods to travel through uh, the old Silk Road route again towards Europe, and will create new opportunities for transport. And another thing that we did is also uh, created and moved uh, the train uh, links uh, from the city center uh, by uh, now uh, clearing up 100 hectares in the city, uh, in the capital of the city, and by uh, putting the train on a faster uh, mode uh, as well. Uh, what we also do is upgrade and uh, privatize um, our uh, other modes, which are, for example, uh, the ports of the country. And uh, APM Terminal today runs uh, one of the largest ports on the coast uh, of Black Sea. So making sure that uh, efficiency is a big part of it, making sure that we are uh, using electronic and ICT systems as much as possible to create transparency and to create efficiency in our system. And the second part, uh, one is infrastructure, but the second part is education. If you don't invest in education for skilled uh, employees, uh, for people uh, that will work in the transport and logistics system, then all the investment infrastructure is uh, wasted. So what we do is, uh, one, we have uh, 10,000 uh, native English teachers in the country to make sure that uh, everyone uh, has the second language, English as a business language. And uh, second, what we do is we promote uh, uh, technical education. So today, uh, in 2011, was the first year where more students chose technical and uh, engineering uh, education over uh, other education and universities. So this is our take on transport and seamless transport. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Minister. In fact, an interesting mix of kind of um, hard and soft issues, if I might put it, between infrastructure, customs, education, and so on in your response. Let me go to your left, if I could, to Mr. Koji Miyahara, who is uh, joining us from NYK Line in Japan. NYK is a major container shipping specialist and a truly global organization, 
And for someone who is moving uh, goods around the world on the scale that you are, it should be very interesting, please, to have your private sector observation on these issues and on these hard and soft infra infrastructure challenges as you see them. Uh, <coughs> Thank you very much. My name is Mia Harati. I'm an of NYK Line Japan. I came from Tokyo. And NYK is a shipping company and operates 850 vessels around the world. And at the same time, we offer global integrated transport services of road distributions and air cargo. So we really are truly global integrated transport service group. Uh, first of all, let me talk about uh, Seamless. We offer Seamless services because uh, maritime shipping is already a Seamless uh, service, uh, except uh, piracy issues, uh, which will be discussed tomorrow and off the coast of Somalia that is uh, somehow preventing seamless services, but uh, the sea is one around the world and the long-standing history and heritage of freedom of maritime and uh, maritime transport and freedom of navigation uh, must be protected fully for the development of the world economy. These are the most important issues that we have to protect and uh, stick by it. And uh, based on my 45 year experience, uh, I would like to mention three important points for the realization of seamless transportation in the future. The first point is that, uh, needless to say, it is uh, to build infrastructures to support bulk transport systems, and particularly in uh, growing emerging uh, cont countries in terms of port, air, road, and the railway facilities uh, must be offered. And uh, in order to do so, the developed country countries need to provide ODA for the construction of infrastructure in terms of hard infrastructure. And the developing countries' companies need to offer operational know-how based on their long experience. And these are, these are indeed crucial. And the second point is uh, uh, to use the IT uh, in order to realize a smooth connection of different modes of transport and international standardization of customs, port entry, and quarantine um, that uh, ha they have to be done electronically, and IT must be fully utilized. And another point is that uh, we have a container uh, transport from China to uh, inland of China to um, America, Detroit. We do it door to door from the inland of China to Chicago for 30 days. We get uh, daily information of the movements of the cargo in question, and we can provide the necessary information to our customers and uh, our customers in Chicago after the disembarkation of the goods in uh, in the port in America and then they can decide to what route they want to take to for the container to be uh, transported so it 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 can be decided in Los Angeles today. That means that they can control the cost and reduce the cost of uh, uh, inventory. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the best utilization of IT will enhance the connectability of transport. This is very important. And the third point is secure safety. As I said earlier, there is an issue of piracy off the coast of Somalia, and that is a very significant, very important issue, and uh, that is threatening the development of world trade. So this 
this will be discussed at a different session, but it is important to further strengthen the international cooperation in order to、uh, further encourage the development of world trade. Thank you. A supplementary question. You've talked there about infrastructure development, you've talked about standardizing rules and regulations and use of information technology, and twice you've mentioned safety and, and the piracy issue. For someone who's moving so much around globally, and you've talked about freedom of the seas, how great a difficulty and how great a cost is associated with the piracy question? You mean that piracy issue? Yes. yes.、Uh, uh, Yes, in terms of piracy, it is really an international issue, and there are certain measures taken internationally. In the past, they only appeared in certain spots. However, today they are spreading their activities areas in the Arabian Sea and in many different places. Part of the sea, so the area is expanding. And in the background, there are certain connections between them and the terrorist activities. So they're splitting around into a larger area. Their piracy activities are expanding. We have to strengthen our measures to contain and to deal with this very serious issues. My right to the Swedish minister, Katharina Elmsetter Sfard, and to, to ask you in respect of the debate, as it's happening in a very general way, but these issues of choosing, you know, focus on consumer or focus on the planner, who calls it, the questions about、uh, infrastructures and access, who regulates it, how open is it,、uh, how do you deal with these issues of seamlessness in terms of Swedish policy? And looking at the curve, practice, are, are you, do you think in some areas you lead or lag? And so, what could we learn from the Swedish experience? Before I start to answer your question, I think we also have to understand why a r e we talking about seamless transportation? First, we have to answer for whom are we doing this? When it comes to private life,、uh, public transportation, it's Because of the everyday life that we have, the needs of going to work or to study, that must be seamless. Because something that we are lack of is time. And if we should reach the challenge, for example, about climate, we like to have like public transportation more attractive than going by your car. But then it must be. Attractive door to door. And for people, it's no matter who d r i v e the bus or who will drive the train or who will own the infrastructure. That is not the importance because I would like to go from A to B. Seamless and smooth. And as you mentioned, with easy to buy ticket, no matter who operates it, and also get good information. The other part is、um, also, you might say, lack of time, because if you don't have your goods or freight on time, you maybe change the one who m a k e the transport for you. Because if you are, have a contract, reliable in trust, you need the predictability of costs, function, and time. And in that case, as we have imagined in Sweden, It is that the states have the responsible for the infrastructure, no matter if it's for public transportation or goods or freight. But then we are open and we are really open for everyone who likes to be a stakeholder in transportation. But then we had a key question Is it possible to be competitors and colleagues at the same time? Yes, you have to, especially when we are out of order. Maybe you don't have any hash winters when the trains d o e s n t work. We have in Sweden. And especially then, you have to work together. So that's how we try to solve it. Let me ask you again one supplementary question, if I may.、Uh, you talk about the state being the provider of the infrastructure. But then having an open mind about who uses the infrastructure. 
Do you have a company like the Italian company we heard about on your railway? Not yet, but since this, this year it's a free market, it's already opened, so it's um, open for everyone to have uh, special lines or whatever. But still you have to be there one and a half year before, so we managed to make it all function. So, so we have just started. It's full deregulated from this year when it comes to person traffic. And this would be regulated by a third party, an independent regulator? Yes, absolutely. It's by legislation. So it's uh, the same uh, conditions for everyone. Thank you very much. L let me come, if I could, to, to Minister Yoshida, who gave his introductory remark to us uh, earlier and uh, talked about seamlessness, uh, offering access and social participation and seamlessness fostering industry services and growth. I wonder if we were to come to something a bit more specific, uh, Minister. You talked about learning from each other. What would be interesting things that Europeans could learn from Japanese experience? And maybe even there are some things that we do or don't do in Europe that could be useful uh, for Japanese to learn from Europeans. So probably your question is uh, uh, this regarding uh, how to evaluate uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the current status of uh, seamless transport in Japan. So uh, how to uh, build up uh, this uh, uh, seamless transport in Japan? Of course, we have a basic uh, infrastructure. However, in Japan, uh, there are many uh, this, uh, uh, transport system uh, run by uh, private uh, companies and the public companies and uh, through operation uh, needs to be uh, realized. In other words, uh, by using one ticket, uh, that is uh, one way to approach seamless transport. And this has already been practiced in urban areas, but uh, in the regional areas, first uh, and foremost, uh, it is very important to maintain network itself. So. In local areas, I'm sure that uh, there is the uh, uh, same issue. And we also have to deal with an aging society. Uh, the biggest problem uh, for aging society is the fare. In other words, the uh, uh, people uh, living with pension, uh, they have to spend money for uh, traffic. And uh, more convenient uh, the uh, transport system it is, but uh, we are not supposed to raise a fare. And uh, of course, uh, we can think about a subsidized system, but uh, there are many uh, financial restrictions. So when we say seamless, it has to be achieved in the context uh, of uh, a daily uh, life. And uh, sometimes an aging society uh, can be a challenge. And the second point is uh, uh, intercity transport. Of course, uh, railway, motorway, and the airports have formed a very functioning uh, network, but they are also missing uh, links. So how to connect the missing links? And also from the viewpoint of large volume of passenger transport, uh, it is uh, uh, important uh, to uh, uh, improve high-speed uh, railway networks. And uh, uh, this is actually the Japan's experience that uh, we can be proud of. In other words, the uh, uh, regions connected with high-speed railway uh, networks uh, could have the uh, possibility for uh, further prosperity. So. In Japan, we will uh, advance in the future uh, the uh, more improvement of uh, high-speed uh, railway networks. And uh, the third point is uh, in Japan, we also have to form seamless transport network in terms of uh, uh, aviation, because Japan is surrounded by sea. And also, uh, in order to eliminate the seams between uh, 
Japan and abroad, the government is also advocating open sky policies and a variety of transport service through the promotion uh, of uh, private sector entry. And also, uh, Japan has the experience of the uh, Great East Japan earthquake. So uh, we have to consider the uh, disaster resistant uh, transport network. That is very important. So in addition to earthquake proof, uh, we also have to address issues like improving disaster monitoring system. So not only seamless, but also replacement possibilities and the multiple options of networks are the important point we have to consider. So not only achieving seamless, uh, of course, we can enhance efficiency and energy efficient system. So uh, the key word is uh, seamless transport based on our experience. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think one of the interesting uh, elements that you mentioned in your response is the question of the evolution of transport policy pricing to do with an aging population. And I'm sure this is an area where we Europeans will want to look at how you experiment with this, precisely because I think you're a bit more advanced than us, but we're catching up on that side. Minister Ramsar, in your contribution, I was fascinated when you came to specific examples. You took some from Leipzig the new Silk Road, the, the, the link to China with the car parts that you mentioned, and very interestingly, how much faster it was than traditional shipping, and how it could even perhaps improve its own efficiency. Do you have other examples inside Germany or between Germany and others where this concept of seamlessness and, and optimization is there as a concrete example today, and where are the next boundaries in terms of something that's achievable in a time horizon, say, of three to five years? Uh, first of all, I mean, it is really impressive uh, when you see that uh, within uh, 23 days you can deliver goods, uh, car parts, uh, just in time to China, and uh, that time could even be halved, uh, for instance, by being able to go through new countries, which used to be the Soviet Union, uh, by bringing down barriers and by being able to go uh, through those countries in a more reliable way. And there is one aspect which is uh, gaining more and more importance for seamlessness, uh, seamlessness in uh, domestic uh, transport, namely the criterion of reliability. We are talking about speed, how to become even faster. However, I believe uh, we have to assume uh, that as far as the question is concerned, uh, to become even uh, faster, that there will be uh, limits. Uh, also, the uh, geography of a country uh, will uh, pose a limit, but also uh, how are people affected, uh, in which ways are people affected by new infrastructure? Will they accept whatever the building of new infrastructure? And in Germany over the last couple of years, Mr. Tiefensee and myself know that very well. We had to have lots of uh, bad experiences. You may have heard about the conversion of a well-known uh, railway station in Germany, where basically a a uh, railway station was uh, to be moved underground, so to speak, in Stuttgart, namely. And that led to developments uh, which uh, elsewhere in the world would be unimaginable. Uh, so you have to take that into account as well. And uh, hence, besides a speed, another criterion is becoming more and more important, namely reliability, reliability of transport, of traffic. Even if I may not be able to achieve top speeds, I still know it's reliable. So I will arrive safely, I will uh, arrive reliably. Uh, that we, of course, as human beings, as passengers, will arrive uh, safely. And this is true for national transport systems as much as for international traffic flows and intercontinental traffic flows.
Let me give you a few examples. You, are, you have asked me, Pat, uh, you wanted to hear about examples from Germany. What is going on at the moment uh, for our railway system? Uh, we basically we refurbish railway links, we build new railway links in, in Germany, and hence we will be able to ship more goods, more freight, and uh, to move freight from the roads onto the rail system. And given the growth in freight, uh, we want to be able to do that uh, with our railway system and to cope with us with our railway system. In a country like Germany, where historically speaking, uh, whatever we have to grapple with certain conditions which may be different elsewhere, I envy my Georgian colleagues uh, that uh, they were able to start from scratch building their uh, transport systems. Neither myself nor Mr. Tiefensee uh, could build new infrastructure, so to speak. Uh, we uh, had to make do with what we had. Uh, Mr. Hilderim, uh, in, in Turkey, of course, you can build new infrastructure. You can start from scratch in some regions. But in uh, Germany, as far as our railway system is concerned, uh, we have a combined system of passenger and freight traffic. In uh, Japan, I was deeply impressed what I saw. Uh, there, I have a pure 100% passenger, high-speed passenger uh, traffic. Uh, when I have a special kind of seamlessness, uh, when there are no seams, no seams between the passenger traffic and the freight traffic, when it can happen on the same rail, so to speak, on the same track. Uh, and uh, in uh, Germany, we uh, try to, to do the same. In Germany, what we try is by uh, refurbishing existing links, uh, by using uh, telematics and uh, making good use of IT systems and electronic systems, and also uh, what we call car to x information, the exchange of information uh, between one car to another car, for instance. And uh, here, uh, to make much better use of existing capacity. I have said goodbye to the belief uh, that transport infrastructure uh, can be added to in the same way as it would be needed and to, in order to cope with the growth. Uh, there are clear limits in Germany, not just as far as financial viability is concerned, but also acceptance on the part of our population. I'm convinced uh, that we will have to make do with the existing infrastructure and uh, will have to make sure that we can transport more people and more freight, not necessarily at higher speeds, but uh, that we will be able to do it that more reliably and uh, more safely than is the case at the moment. Your emphasis on safety and security, your emphasis on optimizing what you already have. And reliability. And reliability. And I think also your story about uh, Stuttgart, your emphasis on the need to bring people with you, a communications infrastructure to bring people and not just an engineering one. Um, I think I'm looking at the clock, and Mr. Schironi, I beg your forgiveness. I know we got a quick question in at the beginning. But it seems to me if we're talking about optimization, I should run this train on time. We started a bit late, but the next sessions will start on time. And consequently, I need to bring this session to a close. And I would like to thank uh, our uh, panelists uh, and our keynote speakers uh, for their uh, contribution. Can I just say to you that we will have a coffee break now for 15 minutes. Um, you have, of course, outside here the exhibition stands. I invite you to look at those and outdoors various activities that you can participate in. And after coffee break, the future of travel, e-ticketing, smartphones and data sharing in Hall 3 on this level, from supply chain to supply stream, creating seamless logistics in MPA, 
uh, rooms three and four, level zero, and facilitating global trade, connectivity across borders, hall two on this level. Thank you for your attention, and I thank our speakers for their contributions. <laughs>